Hello and welcome to this week's devlog for my voxel RPG game. This is a game about exploration and discovery in a procedurally generated world. Sound familiar? I make a devlog each week and last week I focused on ambient occlusion in the world in order to make it look nicer. And it really needed it because it looked awful before. Now, on that journey, I spent many hours thinking aggressively about how I could make the world more interesting. And I didn't have to think very hard before I had the answer. Biomes. Most procedural games do have this, it's the concept of a part of the world that is different from the rest uh, for some reason. Forests, deserts, mountains are really just scratching the surface as mostly you're only limited by your imagination or your insanity. But how do you biome? I hear you ask. I didn't know starting this week. So sit back, don't strap in and let yourself be flung through the windscreen of knowledge. And let me tell you how I did it. I googled it. In all seriousness though, this website, redblobgames.com, does seem to be the gospel for any information relating to procedural generation. It's mostly what I was following when I first started writing the algorithm to generate worlds for my game. Luckily for me, they did happen to have a longer write-up about a bunch of topics in an interactable format. Very nice. Now, previously I was able to generate different voxel types based purely on altitude. This was how I got the sand to look like this in the game, and there's also snow at higher elevations but you rarely see it. So I wanted to be able to have forests dotted around the world in a way that helped break things up. And the solution to this was... Moisture. I originally generated one Perlin noise map in order to keep track of the altitude, uh, but the solution was to also generate a second map which contained the moisture values. The moisture map isn't really based on any sort of geographical concepts or whatever the technical term is, but anyway, observe this graphic. Combining two factors can give variation in the biomes, and this graph does temperature and moisture, but you get the picture. So, I generated a moisture map, which looked like this, and added a bit of code to compare the moisture and altitude when deciding what voxel to place. So here is what that looked like in the map inspector. By this point, I was pretty excited, as it seemed this technique was exactly what I needed. I had variation, and um, strangely, it looked almost natural. But, one thing I had to do first, architecture. I built this class system to manage the biomes. They're defined as part of an enum and then instances of these biomes are populated uh, with functions to contain the logic. The idea is that the biome class can manage which type of voxel to place and I did that with these functions which at that point just returned this specific type of voxel to place. But really this was all done to help me scale the construction process. It'll make it way easier to have all sorts of biomes that do more sort of insane things at a later date. But here's another thought. I need trees in my forests. Duh. I didn't even need to google this one as if you just scroll down the page I was referencing, they tell you how to do exactly that. Thanks guys. Blue noise was the method they described, basically it's just Perlin noise but with a very high frequency. You sample a few points around the voxel you're checking and if it's the highest value in that sample then it becomes suitable for a tree. Hooray! Of course if you shrink the sample region you'll get trees more often almost as if this is some sort of actual forest. This process helps make sure that no trees overlap and are generally planted well, although apparently there are more optimized solutions. Anyway, I implemented the blue noise approach. It did take a little while, but eventually updating the map visualizer to mark out where the trees are, you can see the effect in full force. And it was glorious. So at this point, the map was sort of coming alive, but I needed to add the tree objects to the scene. The model itself looked pretty simple on its own, but when you start to get quite a few of them together, the effect starts to look really interesting. Although, I did have to mess around with the values a bit before it started to look good. But, I was really pleased with how this looked. Mostly. Seems no one made the trees aware that they can't actually grow in the rivers. Nice. But that was a simple enough fix. One other thing that's worth mentioning about the trees is that they're fully destructible. They're actually just entities at the moment, and they only have a health and a mesh component. So this means that the player can attack and destroy them with some of their special moves. Really, the reason for this is that I want to try and make the world as interactive as possible. The player will be able to destroy trees, but also rocks, animal nests, bits of ice, or whatever else I want to put into the game and potentially get rewards for doing so. The balance here is that um, actually destroying a forest might cause some angry enemies to chase after you. This is a game about interacting with the world and finding things. Fundamentally, it seemed like this would be fun to me but I'll just have to give it some better animations or whatever at a later date. Now, let's get some more interesting biomes in this thing. I'm planning to have loads of wacky stuff in this game, but to start with, let's begin with something that's fairly simple, a different species of tree. I decided I would add this cherry blossom biome to the game, 
Uh, but it took a lot more legwork to get working than I thought it would. I wanted to work on the idea of rare biomes, not just something that appears when the altitude and moisture values are correct. I wanted to be able to pick a biome at random and say to it, you are now this other type of biome. The problem was that I didn't know where the various biomes actually were, as they were all just attached per voxel. With this, it became obvious that I needed to bring back an old friend. Flood fill. I was already using this technique to keep track of the water groups and land masses, so I had to alter it a little bit to get it to keep track of biomes. But this was a bit more complicated than I thought it would be. I ended up having to deal with a load of bugs, all of which were entertaining, but none of them were actually any fun to deal with. Like this one, where all the land masses were designated as river tiles. Seems sensible. Eventually though, it all sprung to life and I could alter the biomes however I chose. The process I eventually ended up following was determine biomes, flood fill, check for mutations, and then actualize the biomes, which is basically just place the voxels and determine like where the trees go. This does have some other benefits as well, as the flood fill gives me an array of all the data about where the biomes are, which will be extremely useful in the future. Should I want to do things like EXP on visiting a new biome, achievements, or just some text telling me I've entered the forest, I can do all these things with this system. With all that in place, I could weeb up the world, as the cherry blossom biome could just be rammed into the world like this. But as per the law of the video game devlog, something was wrong. See, I forgot to designate which of the biomes are actually available to be mutated, which led to a bunch of nutty things. For example, this cherry blossom island. Although to be honest, that's pretty cool, so I might just leave that in the game. Or forgetting that some biomes are bigger than others and converting them all indiscriminately. Or forgetting that I also designated the entire ocean as a biome, and as a result I ended up with this. Actually that one's pretty cool though, but uh, obviously it's not going to make it into the final game. All these things were resolved by making it so that only forest can be mutated to a cherry blossom biome, and as a result, there's now the chance of finding something rare in the game. And I'd just like to point out that I have loads of plans for biomes in future. Uh, this is really just me laying the technical groundwork for much of this. I want to have a biome with lots of beehives, a biome ravaged by cannibalistic ants where you can go into the underground network they've made and kill the queen for rare loot. I want to have decrepit swamps riddled with spirits and evil witches, deep water which contains relics from the past, and some other stuff I don't know yet, but it'll be fun. Basically what I'm saying is this is a game about variety. One of the three words I used to describe this game was lots, so I'm building lots of pipelines where it's easy to produce a variety of content which will allow me to pack the game with as much stuff as possible can release. I went with a simple art style to try and get as much stuff in the game as possible, as personally I think what players want more than anything is gameplay. Leave a comment down below if you agree. Also subscribe. So that was what I did this week. I must say I'm quite pleased with how it all went. Um, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be working on next week, but I'll figure it out as I go. So anyway, thank you. I'll whack my head with this glass. See you in the next video. Ow.